Warning, the following video contains spoilers for Pixar's Luca. Hello and welcome back to Gate of Theories. Today we're going to be talking about the brand new Pixar film, Luca. So sit back, get comfortable and tell Bruno Silencio and let's get into it. Luca actually took me by surprise. The film was much better than I had anticipated. The fact Disney decided to release Luca and Soul straight to Disney Plus rather than Premiere Access actually baffles me because most people would pay for both films. But hey, I'm not complaining. Man has to save some peas somewhere. Anyway, the film was beautifully animated with lots of vibrant colours. The way scenes would transition from reality to Luca's imagination were really well crafted. In terms of the story, it was heartfelt and genuine, something the whole family could enjoy. The film was also very funny at times. This was done well by the way the characters moved and through the dialogue. I also really like the little bits of Italian thrown in. What's wrong with you, stupido? Huh? It was also great to see Pixar back in its prime with movies such as this and Soul being released side by side. Two great films by Pixar which nowadays doesn't happen as much. But that's a quick small review of the film but let's delve into one of the main underlying themes of Luca and that is queer theory. What is queer theory I hear you ask? Well, queer theory is actually very hard to explain, but I'll try and give you guys an understandable quick definition. So queer theory is exploring the oppressive power of dominant norms relating especially to sexuality as well as other things and how that affects those who cannot or don't want to live according to those norms. I hope you kind of got that. Anyway, let's now look at how Luca has this underlying theme of queer theory. Firstly, I just want to say that Luca doesn't go into details into sex and relationships and the creator Casoros has stated I was really keen to talk about a friendship before girlfriends and boyfriends come into the complicate things. And it makes sense as this is a kids film but that still doesn't take away the underlying message and themes of the film for kids about identity and acceptance which to me are two key themes of this film. This whole idea comes from the main character Luca himself who in the film is a sea monster. Sea monsters live in the sea but inhabit the special ability to transform into human form when they are not touching any water and the film follows Luca as he faces his fear to go to the surface and experience human life. And from this, then eventually learn he doesn't and shouldn't have to hide his true self of being a sea monster from the humans. This fear is derived from generations of sea monsters being hunted down by the local humans and the film goes into heavy detail of how the humans are afraid of the sea monsters. So they hunt them down and how the sea monsters are afraid of being killed by the humans. This to me can be used to show representation and the struggles that face the LGBT plus community in society. The film isn't saying or suggesting queer people are monsters but rather how queer people identify themselves differently to the rest of society and how that difference can make other people view them in a bad way and in extreme conditions even view them as monsters or as inhuman like how Luca is. The film deals with Luca's growing fear of showing the world who he really is. This happens at the beginning where Luca's mother won't even let him go to the surface in fear of how society might judge him. Our son has a death wish. Throughout the film, Luca and Alberto go to various lengths to hide who they are. For example, the boat scene ah. and dinner scene. Ah. Man, I do not want to mess with Massimo. He looks like he could knock me out with his pinky finger. Both these scenes use Pixar's cool animation to show fun ways of how Alberto and Luca will go to any cost to hide who they are from the public. This can be used to represent how queer people who haven't came out yet might go to the deep lengths to hide who they are from everyone else. Throughout the film, this idea of feeling trapped and hidden is further explored by Luca's desperation to go to school, yet Alberto constantly reminds him of the harsh reality that there will always be a risk of him being found out. It's not till the climax of the film when Luca finally gains the courage to reveal to the world that he is a sea monster. This scene especially reflects how hard it can be for queer people to come out as shown earlier on in the film. 
When Luca first imagines coming up to the surface, he is trapped by the sea, representing how queer people can feel trapped inside as they don't feel like they can fully be themselves. In this final scene, Luca steps out from a dark, sheltered place and out into the open, allowing everyone to see him. This could be to represent the courageous act of coming out, and how people struggle with it in fear of not being accepted. The film also shows the harsh effects of homophobia as many different people in their film take hatred to the sea monsters. There's the obvious ones such as the bully Ercole Visconde who takes pride in catching sea monsters and even stops the race when he sees Alberto is one. But there's also a wide range such as this very small but also heartbreaking detail. When Luca reveals to the world he is a sea monster, you can see a mother pick up her child in fear and on purposely hide her away, showing the unfortunate truth that even children today may be taught to be see being queer as bad. However, with this, the film also shows how many people learn to grow once they become educated. For example, Ercole Visconti's friends end up leaving the bully to be allies with the sea monsters at the end. However, the ending doesn't also undo the underlying truth of this theme, that unfortunately some people in society will never be fully ready to accept everyone. When Luca, Alberto and Luca's parents begin truly showing who they are, two other women take away their umbrellas and show that they were also sea monsters all along. This can represent queer people coming together such as at pride events and having heterosexual allies they can trust. However, as the camera zooms out, you can see several other people still hiding underneath umbrellas. This could be to represent how even though people may come out, there are still some people out there who struggle to reveal to the world who they truly are. And unfortunately, this underlying theme of identity and acceptance relating to queer theory also shows the harsh reality. Throughout the film, it makes it very clear to Luca and the audience that this Italian town hates sea monsters and even takes pride in killing them by having huge statues of men slaughtering sea monsters just in the middle of the town square. Almost everyone in the town carries weapons ready to kill any sea monsters on sight and it has been basically drilled into society that all sea monsters are nothing but evil. This even goes to the extent of the triathlon not being able to start until an army of fishermen are lined up ready to attack any incoming sea monsters. If any sea monsters show up today, we are ready for them. Unfortunately, this can relate to the LGBTQ plus's constant prejudice and hate crimes against them throughout history. Through conversion therapy, torture and even death, like how the sea monsters were killed in this small Italian town. And how unfortunately many are unwilling to change as it is embedded in many different societies. If we look at just Italy itself, same sexual activity has been legal in Italy since 1819. However, same-sex civil unions and unregistered cohabitation was only legally recognised in 2016. Even though LGBTQ plus citizens are legal, many still do not accept them and many will suffer like how Luca and the Sea Monsters do. If this film is seen with this underlying theme, then it would be Pixar's first true representation film. In the past, Pixar and Disney and other big companies haven't been great at representation such as Onward's attempt to seem equal by introducing a stereotypical queer character in the background and think that it was enough. Instead, here Pixar are truly showing the struggles that queer people face and show it in a way that is entertaining and enjoyable to watch. Pixar also recently has been going with this theme further by releasing the Pixar show out. This all leads to hopefully a brighter future for the company in representing the more underrepresented people in society. For example, like how Souls, Pixar's last film, was the studio's first black lead main role. To add to this, this might not be the first time Pixar has used this theme of queer theory either, it may just not have been picked up on as much. In fact, Law Murat did an excellent paper on how Ratatouille has an underlying theme of queer theory too. If you want to read that, I'll leave a link in the description to that article. Overall, this film just shows you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Luca sums up the whole theme of queer theory by what his grandma says at the end. Some people, they'll never accept him. 
but some will. And he seems to know how to find the good ones. And I don't think there could be any other better message to send out to kids and adults watching this film. And of course, this film came out in Pride Month of all months. If that doesn't confirm this was an underlying theme, then I don't know what will. And that concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and why not share this video on social media. Tell me your thoughts on today's video as well as what you thought of Luca in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear all your guys' thoughts. If you're new to the channel, why not hit that subscribe button for more theories, reviews, tier lists, top 10s and much more every Tuesday and Friday and join us on Sundays for our then and now Sundays. So you're going to want to click that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed and mint like that, why not also click that bell button so you never miss a new video. And if you still need more content, then make sure you check out our other channel, Got Reacts, where we do daily reaction videos. Link in the description. There is also a link in the description to our new channel, Got Sports. So if sports is more your thing, make sure you also check that out. But anyway, I've been Lewis, you've been watching Gate of Theories. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on Sunday for a brand new Then and Now Sunday. Thanks for watching guys.